Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angelisa and I make videos about books. And today, if you can't tell by the title of the video, we're going to be talking about book talk books. So I'm going to be calling this my good girl's guide to book talk. <laughs> it's a play on of the popular book talk book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is actually one of the books we're going to be talking about today. But basically, we're going to be going through a bunch of book talk books, at least the ones that I've read, and we're going to talk about whether or not they are worth your time. With social media and best-selling lists and trending books and all that, sometimes it's hard to decipher what is actually worth reading and what is just hyped up. So today I'm going to be going through those based off of my opinions, whether or not a book is worth your time or not. So we're going to jump right into it because there's a lot of books to get through. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So to start off, we're going to start off with the holy trinity of contemporary romance. And that is Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation, and Book Lovers. So I'm going to go in order of release date, at least for these three. So actually, um, the first one to come out was Beach Read, which is actually my favorite of the three. So Beach Read follows Augustus in January. They are two writers who I believe, I read this a long time ago, but I, from what I remember, they knew each other in college and they're somewhat like writing rivals. They don't really like each other. And January goes to her dad's lake house to basically, I think it was to clean it out or something like that. Like her dad was going through a divorce or has a new wife or something like that and left her this house and her house ends up being right next to Augustus all summer long. So basically they enter this bet whereas Gus writes one type of book and January writes the other type like romance books so they swap types of books try to write each other's genres and work together to do it and by the end of the story you know they're falling in love and honestly it is my favorite Emily Henry book I would say 100% worth your time. Now, on the other hand, people we meet on vacation, I'm going to upset a lot of people. Uh, when I first read this, I probably gave it four or five stars, like some really high rating. Um, and honestly, in hindsight, compared to Beach Read and even Book Lovers, the chemistry just wasn't there for me. I was, it was still a really cute book. I'm not going to just Emily Henry. I love her books. I love her writing. It's worth the read. Just wasn't my favorite, but definitely pick it up. It might be your favorite if you like, like friends to lovers, not really my favorite if they don't have the best chemistry, but that was just my opinion. And then the last one that she released just this last May in 2022 was Book Lovers. So that had to do with, again, two people in the book world who they were kind of like rivals and I think her name was Nora was the older sister the main character she goes to visit this town and Charlie ends up being there and they kind of just spend like the weekend together in this town together and yeah I honestly I liked book lovers more so for Nora's relationship with her sister I really enjoyed that whole aspect of it so in my opinion i would say that book lovers is totally worth the read i would say all three are worth the read but for me my top my top of the three was beach read and i don't think that'll ever change to be honest we will see when happy place comes out if it knocks beach read out of that first place spot for my emily henry books but right now beach read she reigns she reigns Anyway, the next one we're going to talk about is Funny You Should Ask. So if you don't know, this book was super hyped up for two reasons. One, look at the cover. It is so pretty. And second of all, it's supposedly based off of a Chris Evans interview. Now, I don't know if it was just when I was reading this book, but I, I didn't find it all that interesting. Um, I wasn't invested in the characters or the story. And I don't remember what I rated this, if I'm being honest, but I remember it being kind of low. This says four stars, but I feel like I rated it 3.5. I don't know why this says four stars. You know what? Last year I was very nice to books. In hindsight, I would definitely give this like a three and a half. It was okay. I don't think it's worth your time, but it was okay. I'm still going to read the next one that she's putting out that has the same kind of cover, except it's like in blue, pink, and purple. But I don't know if, like, Funny You Should Ask was really all that for me. A lot of people loved it, so do with that what you will. But for me, personally, wasn't really worth my time. I honestly feel like I wasted my time reading that book. It didn't feel like it lived up to what the hype was. Alright, the next one we have is Every Summer After 
you know what i don't even want to talk about this book we're just gonna skip it right, the next ones i have are the love hypothesis and love on the brain so these are both by ali hazelwood i enjoyed both of these books however i think the love hypothesis was 100 worth my time it was a five star like favorite read for me it was at the beginning of my reading journey it really really got me into reading like it kind of continued that what's it called catapulting into reading however love on the brain just did not hit for me the main character like the female main character bothered me so much she was so annoying and the male main character just reminded me a lot of adam from the first one so i don't really think it was worth my time i really hope that her next one's kind of I don't know some sort of redemption <laughs> because right now I haven't really been enjoying her recent ones like after the love hypothesis and I read that she's coming out with another book it's a YA debut but it's about chess or something like that and when I read the synopsis the synopsis really just like cringed me out so I'm really hoping that it's not bad because if I'm being honest like I read Allie Hazelwood books for the spice and I don't know what her books are without the spice so we're gonna see how that goes i hope no one comes for me for saying that but yeah the verdict for me was love hypothesis 100 percent worth my time loved that book love on the brain it it missed for me for me some people really loved it it was still a good book like i think if i didn't read the love hypothesis first i might have liked it but in terms yeah it just compared yeah no the next one is heartstopper so i've only read the first graphic novel of this book volume series i don't even know what to call them i don't know graphic novel terms to be honest i don't read manga and that stuff all that much really it's only heartstopper and laura olympus that i picked up which is so difficult for a book talk girly but heartstopper is adorable i loved the first volume i don't know why i didn't go straight into the second third and fourth i i couldn't tell you i think i just like kind of pivoted to a different stream and I haven't touched them again but I do want to go back into them I might do a reading vlog of just like all five once she releases the fifth one because that's coming out soon I think or maybe it already did I don't remember but either way I'm very excited for that but yeah totally worth your time so cute very quick reads I think I read it in like an hour maybe even like 20 minutes it was ridiculously fast and i want to watch the show so we're gonna see how that is but yeah the next one is the fine print and that one <laughs> if you watched my recent was it february wrap up i read the fine print in february and uh it wasn't my favorite yeah um you can watch the full rant there, but what I would say is, unfortunately, I think if you want to read the second and third books, which are really good, apparently, I've heard, compared to the first, I'm pretty sure you need to read the first, but I could be wrong. But if it weren't for the second and third, I would say this book was not worth my time. I... I just didn't really like Rowan at all. He was very bossy and weird and, like, sad. Um, and their relationship just wasn't it for me. But hopefully the next ones are better. Alright, the next one is Icebreaker. And if you know me, you know this is probably my favorite contemporary romance book of all time. I don't know why. I didn't think a hockey figure skating romance was going to be it for me. But it was. Um, I gave this 5 stars, 6 stars, asterisk kind of love. And I just absolutely loved it. I know some people don't like it they think it might be it's too spicy yeah, if you don't like spice like don't read this book other people think it's really long that it's too long and that there's too many side characters i loved every single side character and i could decipher every one of them when i was reading about them i had no confusion and i liked the length of it it was longer than a typical like contemporary romance meaning it wasn't under 400 pages but it wasn't like 500 pages. I think it was like 400 and something. Like it was very manageable in my opinion. But yeah, I loved Icebreaker. <laughs> totally worth your time in my opinion. The next ones are going to be Colleen Hoover books. Now I picked three specifically and I picked these three for a reason. I'm not going to talk about any other Colleen Hoover books. We're going to talk about It Ends With Us, Reminders of Him, and Verity. So It Ends With Us, 
depends if you want to be pissed off. I think it really depends on what type of books you like to read. Read the trigger warnings for all of these books. It ends with us. I enjoyed reading, but for some people it may not be worth your time and it may not be your jazz. It does have depictions of domestic assault, some topics that it goes over some people feel aren't dealt with in the best way and it's just a very like controversial book if you know the tea you know the tea so it ends with us i'm gonna let you decide reminders of him i would say is worth your time i really enjoyed reminders of him i love the story that it was telling i love the focus that it had on what is her name i don't even remember her name right now but on the main characters um, her own life as a mother, as a single mother, as someone who's coming out of prison, like all of these things. Like her relationship with Ledger, I didn't really mind or care all that much. Oh, was it Kenna? It was something like that. I can't remember. I'm like, her name keeps coming to my mind. Yeah, that relationship, it was good. It was nice. But it, for me, it wasn't part of the main plot. Like for me, I was really invested in just like her whole journey through this. So yeah, I would say reminders of him is worth your time. As for Verity, <laughs> Verity, you need to go into it understanding that it is absolutely a thriller. It is not like Colleen Hoover's other books. It is a psychological thriller. It is meant to be messed up and I can tolerate it because it's meant to be messed up. So I would say Verity is worth your time. I finished that book in like one day. I just had to know what was going on and what happened. And I am team manuscript. If you know, you know, I'm team manuscript. So I would say that book is worth your time. Right, the next one is Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So everybody and their moms know about this book. Like literally, I got it from my mom for Christmas because I figured she would like it. And this book is 100% worth your time. The romance, the storytelling, the historical fiction, the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid writes a story. I cannot. It's one of the best books I've ever read. It was one of my five star, like top, top, top reads of the year and rightfully so. The hype is worthy. Like, it is right and just. <laughs> so I would definitely say Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is worth your time, and you should definitely pick it up if you haven't already. Like, you are living under a rock if you have not read this book. The next one is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is one of my favorite YA mysteries. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder follows Pip and she wants to investigate like a murder um, that happened and she kind of gets really involved in it and I believe there's a honestly it's been so long since I read I need to read as good as dead but there's a podcast that she makes and it's actually a lot of fun to read and the romance in it was really cute. I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I totally think it's worth your time. No matter what age you are, it's such a fun read. Um, and with that, I want to talk about One of Us is Lying and that series by Karen McManus. And same kind of vibe as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I loved both of these. Like, I read them back to back and I didn't grow bored by either of them, even though I read them right after one another and following each series after, like there's no confusion, like I didn't get mixed up, they're so distinct from each other, yet both are like murder mysteries that take place in a high school and are so similar in that aspect, like when I'm reading them, I feel like I'm reading the other one, but they're so, the stories are so different at the same time. I don't know if that made any sense, but either way, both of those books are worth your time for sure. I loved A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and One of Us is Lying, and I read the second book for both of them as well, and they were good. All right, the next one is The Silent Patient. So this is a like horror psychological thriller, not horror, a psychological thriller mystery. And I would say this is totally worth your time. I loved this book. Well, I shouldn't say loved. I really liked this book. It wasn't like a five star top read for me, but it was a really good book. And as a psychology major, someone who graduated with a bachelor in psychology, it was so interesting to read. I would say it is worth your time, it is worth the hype, and I can see why a lot of people are intrigued by this book. For me, reading the interview at the end with Alex Michalidis or whatever his name is was really interesting because he talked about how he was able to write this book like this and why this book was one of his best. So that was really interesting to me as well. So yeah, totally worth your time. Definitely pick up a Patient if you haven't already. Right. The next few are some fantasy reads. So the first one we're going to talk about is Akatar and the Akatar series. So this really depends for me and all the girlies <laughs> that I know. Akatar is worth your time. 
it is so worth your time a quart of thorns and roses before i read it i was told you may not love it it may not be a five star for you but keep going keep pushing if you don't like it because the second two will kind of like redemption for you and i will pass that advice along i loved a Court of Thorns and Roses. I had no complaints about it. I was like, what is everybody talking about? This is amazing. I love this book. And then I went into A Court of Mist and Fury and I understood exactly what they were talking about. A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin are so much better than the first one for reasons that if you know, you know. But yeah, I really enjoyed Akatar. I would say if you haven't picked it up already, pick it up now because it's so worth your time in my opinion. These were this series just like had me by a chokehold and I haven't even f finished it yet. I still have to read A Court of Silver Flames. It's on my TBR for the month. Stay tuned. Maybe I'll put a reading vlog out for that. We're going to see how we feel. But yeah, it will be worth my time until the series ends. <laughs> All right, the next one is the Dance of Thieves duology. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, I've probably talked about Dance of Thieves in like every other video because it's just come up so often. Dance of Thieves, both books, 100% are worth your time. Both of them were five star, six star reads for me. I loved both of them so much. I love Jason Kazzy so much, like so much. I, I, they're on like Feyre and level, you know? I don't want to say because I feel like it's a spoiler, but if you don't know, then you've, you've been living under a rock. But, like, they are on that level for me. Their chemistry is amazing. The way that they, like, their enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers was just, mm, chef's kiss. I loved it, and I will never stop recommending this duology to anybody who likes fantasy or romance or books to be honest, because even the adventure in it and the plot was amazing, in my opinion, at least. All right, the last one is the Touch of Darkness series or Game of Fate series. So, hmm, how can I... Okay, if you don't know, A Touch of Darkness is about Hades and Persephone, and A Game of Fate is about Hades and Persephone, and they basically follow the same story, but one is in Persephone's point of view, and one is in Hades's point of view. And with that, you get both sides of their scenes together so there's a little bit of repetition with any of their scenes together but you get each of their point of views plus scenes that they're not together so in Hades's book you know there's a lot of scenes with the gods and a lot of scenes at Olympus and blah 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 blah, blah. whereas Persephone's book there's a lot of scenes like with the news place and with articles and at school and with her friends and all that stuff so you could read both which is what I'm doing and I would say in my opinion both are worth your time but if you don't really care about oh Persephone's story you could just re read Hades's story and vice versa but I will say that a lot of people's opinion of this is that it's like a smutty like Wattpad mythology book and I'm not gonna disagree I'm just gonna say that I enjoy it I think it's gold. Yeah. And that's it. It's worth my time. I don't know if it's worth yours, but it's worth my time. So do with that information what you will. But if you're going to take my opinion, I would say it's absolutely worth your time, babe. All right, guys. So that is all of the book talk books that I'm going to talk about today. I read more, but you know, I don't have enough time to talk about all of them. Yeah, so those are my opinions on whether or not these books are worth your time. A lot of them have the hype for a good reason, but you know, some of them in my opinion just don't deserve all the hype it gets, or the hype maybe ruined the book for me, or it's just difference of opinions. It's just not my type of book, but it might be your type of book. I'm not going to bash any of the books on this list. I picked them all up for a reason. They were all intriguing to me in one way or another, but if you're on a crunch and you're trying to decipher, you know, you've got 200 books on your TBR and you're like, I want to read the best of the best. Which ones should I read and which ones should I miss for now? That's my evaluation for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below this emoji if you made it this far. And don't forget to subscribe and like. It really helps me when you guys do that. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or whenever you are watching this. And I'll see you next time.